I know that many of us have done some traveling, and some of you have done a lot of traveling. And anytime you go to stay in a motel or stay in a hotel, anytime you, uh, maybe some of you have been on a cruise, or you uh, try to get a, a flight and you want to fly somewhere, you get on a train, you want to go somewhere, or maybe you're going to a new city and you've got to rent a car, seems like anywhere you travel and anything that you're doing when you're traveling, you've got to have a reservation for it. You've got to have a reservation, at least if you want a good deal. You've got to have a reservation when you show up at the airport and you're ready to get on a plane or ready to get on a train at the train station. Show up at that hotel or motel, you show up to rent a car, do you have a reservation is what they're going to ask. Wouldn't you know it that as Christians, we are also traveling. And everybody on this earth is on a journey today. Whether you're a Christian or not this morning, you, you're on a journey. You're on a life's journey that is headed, well, it's headed in a direction. The question we want to investigate this morning is, have you made your reservation? You want to stay in a hotel, you better call ahead and make sure there's going to be a room for you. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare it, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Earlier in that passage, Jesus talked about his father's house. And the King James, the New King James says that, that in his father's house there are many mansions. The room there, the, the word there literally means in my father's house, there are many rooms. Question this morning is, have you made your reservation for one of those rooms? It's one of those reservations that you've got to make ahead of time. You can't get there and knock on the door and say, well, are there any rooms left? You've got to make your reservation ahead of time. Have you made your reservation for heaven? Have you made your reservation for a room that Jesus has prepared there? This morning I want us to begin by understanding that the Bible teaches us that going to heaven requires a reservation. It's not just a good thing to have. It's just not something that, that would be helpful to have. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to have a reservation. You got your Bible? Turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, and I want us to look at verses 3, 4, and 5 for a little while this morning. And I want us to see what these verses tell us about heaven and tell us about this reservation in heaven. When you turn your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 1, you find that heaven is a remarkable place. I want you to see how it's described in verse 4. The Bible describes heaven as a place that is undefiled. Or your Bible might have instead the word imperishable. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, when it says that heaven is imperishable or, or, or that, it is, uh, uh, that it is incorruptible, this is a word that's talking about its endurance. It's talking about something, it's talking about heaven, that heaven is going to last forever. It's not subject to decay. It's not like our human bodies that are subject to decay. It's not like everything else that you have. It, it, it's, how old is your car? I had a Saturn that was 18 years old. That thing had 200,000 miles on it or so, close to it anyway. The odometer broke at 100 and something. But at 18 years old, that car didn't, you know, it, it just didn't run like it used to, you know. Didn't look like it used to. And it, we would have had it for another 18 years if that sorry guy hadn't stolen it and, and burned it up. But it just wasn't the same after 18 years. Heaven is incorruptible. It is imperishable. The Bible says that it is undefiled. When it comes to the purity of heaven, it is undefiled. There's not a single solitary sin that's going to bother you in heaven. There's not a single solitary sin that's going to creep through the door of heaven. There is a pureness and a, free, a freedom from sin unlike any other place. You want to go to heaven? Here, here is a remarkable place that the Bible says it fades not away. You ever, you ever buy your wife flowers 
Do you ever buy the expensive flowers because they're going to last for a really long time? You buy your wife flowers and you bring them home and you, and you, 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 you put them under water and you cut the stem, the bottom of the stem off to give it a nice fresh life and it's under running water and you put it in, you put it in the vase with that, with that junk that they give you at the, at the floors, whatever that powder stuff is. I mean, who knows what it is. It might be tied for all I know. But you put that in the vase and you say, here you go, honey, I love you. And then the next day, and the next day, and then what, what are they looking like a week later? What has she done with them a week later? Mm, I'll just take these and put these outside, honey. What happened? Mm, they faded away. What did you have to do as a husband? You better go buy some more so you can show her how much you love her. When we go to heaven, it's not going to fade. When we go to heaven, it is going to be perpetually new every day. It, it's, it, it's, it's going to be breathtaking. Can you imagine how breathtaking heaven's going to be when you see it for the first time? It's going to be so breathtaking that it is going to be breathtaking every single day. It's not going to get old. It's not going to be, oh, man, I've been in this place for a thousand years. By God, are you going to give us anything else? I mean, this is just getting old. Not going to get old. You want to go to heaven? Are you ready to go to heaven? It's not just a remarkable place. The Bible says at the end of verse 4 that heaven is a reserved place. It is incorruptible, undefiled, and it fades not away. What does it say at the end of that verse? Reserved in heaven for you. For who? Who's, who's heaven reserved for? Back up to verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has done what? According to His abundant mercies, what has God done? He has begotten us. What does that mean? Those who are children of God have been born again. They have been begotten. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think about it. Have you been born again? According to what the Bible says, have you been born again? We're going to talk about that. Have you been begotten again? Are you a child of God according to what the Bible says? Are you one, the, end of verse, the rest of verse 3 says, are you one who has a living hope? The hope of heaven, does it belong to you? Do you have that living hope? What is, what is the first part of verse 4? When it describes heaven as incorruptible, undefiled, and fades not away, what's the first part of verse 4 describe, say that heaven is? It is an inheritance. You know what inheritance is, all right? It only is for certain people. An inheritance isn't for everybody. An inheritance is only for certain ones. Only for those who are children of God, who have been begotten again unto that living hope. Heaven is a reserved place, but the question is, is it reserved for you? Is it reserved for you? Turn your Bible to the last page of the book of Revelation. And I want us to look at two verses at the end, at, near the end of the book of Revelation because I want us to see that the Bible teaches us that you cannot go to heaven without a reservation. It can't happen. We see that in 1 Peter chapter 1. I want you to look at the last verse of chapter 21 and the last verse of chapter 20. And I want you to see two words that really nail this down for us. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. Do we have to have a reservation to go to heaven? But there shall by no means, Revelation 21, 27, there shall by no means enter it, heaven. There shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but, and then I've got this four-letter word after the word but, only. First part of the verse just told us, What's not going to be in heaven? The first part of the verse just told us who is not going to be in heaven. What does the end of the verse say? Only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life are going to go to heaven. What does that sound like? You can't go to heaven without a reservation. Only those who have a reservation are going to go. Now look at the last verse of chapter 20. Chapter 20 and verse 21. You don't have the word only over here. My Bible says, and anyone. You got the word only? Now you've got the word anyone. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
You can't go to heaven without a reservation. Only those who have a reservation go to heaven, and anyone who doesn't have a reservation is not going to go. But can I share something with you that maybe you haven't thought about? If you don't have a reservation in heaven, you've got a reservation somewhere else. I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm not saying that to be cute. I'm saying that because that's what 2 Peter chapter 2 and the book of Jude teach us. The Bible uses the same word reservation, uses the same word reserved for heaven to talk about hell being a place that is reserved for the unrighteous. Look in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. And here are the unjust, or your translation may say the unrighteous, and God has it reserved. He's got a place reserved for those who are unrighteous and unjust. So if you don't have a reservation in heaven, it's not just, well, I, I don't have a reservation in heaven, I'll just hang out on the beach. If you don't have a reservation in heaven, there is a reservation somewhere else for you, and those are the only two possible reservations for you to have. Have you made your reservation for heaven? Going to heaven requires one. So if we're going to have a reservation, Bible says there are some requirements. To go to heaven, I've got to have a reservation. And to have a reservation, there are some requirements, the Bible teaches, in order to obtain that reservation. Have you ever made a reservation online? Raise your hand if you've made a reservation, on, like four of you, right? Come on. I mean, see, uh, all right, now we're, okay, you made a reservation online. You've got to make a, and, and whether you're reserving a hotel, you're, you're booking a flight, you're renting a car, you, you, any of those things you do online, you, you go to the website, and they've got some fields that you've got to fill in, right? Fill in this field, fill in this field, fill in, and you, you just got to scroll down this page of all these things you've got to fill in, right? If you're going to make a reservation to go to heaven, are there some fields just like making a reservation online that you would need to fill in. You know, anytime I've booked a hotel or a motel, anytime I've booked a flight, anytime I've booked a, a, uh, a rental car, the first thing they ask me is, what's your destination? Where are you going? I, mean, I can't book a hotel unless the hotel knows, well, which one are you looking for? Where are you going? Guess what you've got to decide? to make a reservation for heaven. You've got to decide, where am I going? And you need to fill in that field with all of your heart, the statement that says, I want to go home to heaven. Is that your destination? The Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 3 says, Seek those things that are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. Have you done that? Have you set your sights to say, that's where I want to go? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 says, don't lay up treasures on this earth. But verse 20 says, where do I need to lay up treasures? In heaven. What does that mean? That means that's what I want my destination to be. That's where I've set my sights. That's where I've set my goal. That's where I have put my citizenship. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 talks about us being citizens of heaven. If you're a Christian, the Bible says you're a citizen of heaven. If you were asked, what is your destination? What would you say it is? Without any question this morning, could you say that your destination is your eternal home in heaven? It's not yours if you don't have a reservation there. But you know the other thing they ask me when I go to make a, make a reservation or book something online? They want to know where I'm going. You know what else they want to know? They want to know when I'm going. They, they, they want the date that I'm going to visit. They want the date I'm going to fly. They want the date that, 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 I'm, that I'm going to rent this car. Why, why do they want to know that? Well, they need to make sure they've got enough room. If you were asked the date of your reservation for heaven. What would you say? Have you picked your day out? I mean, have you got your calendar out and figured out when it's going to be a good time for you? 
What day did you make your reservation for heaven? Did you mark it on your calendar? The reality is that if we're going to fill in this field that says what date are we going to go to heaven, we're going to have to put any day. It could be today. And if it's not today, could it be tomorrow? You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 44, be ready. You know why Jesus said to be ready? Because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Would you expect Jesus to come right in the middle of a sermon? Wouldn't that be awesome? If he came right in the middle of a sermon, he's coming at an hour you do not expect. And so he says in Matthew 25, verse 13, watch. Chapter 24, be ready. Chapter 25, watch. Keep your eyes open. For you don't know the day or the hour which the Son of Man comes. Are you ready today? Are you watching today? Jesus could come back today, and today could be your any day. Or maybe you're not going to live until Jesus comes. James 4 verse 14 says, Our life is but a vapor. It appears for a while and then vanishes away. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. Maybe you won't live until Jesus comes. Maybe this physical body and this life will give out first. Are you ready for that day? That day could be today. If it's not today, it could be tomorrow. If you were to put on a calendar the day I'm ready to go to heaven, could it be today? Have you made your reservation in case it is today? You know, I go online and I make a reservation. I try to book a room, I book a flight, I book a, book a car. They want to know, what, where are you going? They want to know, when are you going? And then you get down to the bottom of the page, somewhere near the bottom of the page, and say, okay, David, how are you, how you, uh, you going to put your, are you going to put your name on this? Or are you booking this for somebody else? Could you book a reservation to heaven for somebody else? Could you do that? I'd like to do that. I, I, I've, I've, got, I've got two, I've, I've got two uh, individuals that I'd love to book a reservation for just to make it absolutely solitary sure that they're going to go. But if you had to put somebody's name in there, guess what? You can only put your name. You can't book it for somebody else. You have to make the reservation to go to heaven for you. Which means that it doesn't matter what your parents have done. You can't put their name on that line. It doesn't matter what church you've been a member of. You can't put that name on that line. It doesn't matter who your preacher was. You can't put his name on that line. Look in Philippians chapter 4 for just a moment. I want you to see this, and we, we could see this in a number of different places, but I want you to just see it over here in Philippians chapter 4. As Paul's writing to some of his favorite people on this earth in the church of Philippi that, that he adored, that they had, a, they had a very close bond with each other, and he, he's coming to the close of this book, and in Philippians chapter 4 in verse 2, uh, he, he mentions two individuals by name, Euodia and Syntyche, and then I want you to look at verse 3, where he says, And I urge you also, true companion, whoever he might have been addressing there, they knew who he was talking about. I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Euodia, Syntyche, Clement, this one that he addresses as his true companion. Did they have their name in the book of life? He says that they did. But whose name was there for them? It had to be their name. Euodia couldn't say, well, Clement's name is there, and I went to church with Clement, and so, and so we're, we're good. The only way that you get to go to heaven is if it's your name 
that God has written in the book of life. Because the Bible says that when Jesus comes and we are all taken to that great judgment scene in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 talks about the great white throne and him who sat on him and all, and, and, and all of those who came before him, the small and the great, stand before God. And then the, the next statement says, and books were opened. And then it says, another book was opened, which is the book of life. So there's books that are opened on the day of judgment. One of the books that is open is the book of life. And then the next statement says, and the dead are judged according to their works by the things that are written in the books. On the day of judgment, you will not be judged based upon your parents' works or the church's works or your preacher's works. You will be judged by your works. Have you made your reservation? Is your name, your name, in the book of life? Are you sure? How would you get your name into the book of life? You go to this online reservation. Where are you going? Okay, here's where. When are you going? Okay, who's going? Are you booking this for yourself? Or are you booking this for somebody else? And then they want to know, okay, David, how are you going to pay for this? You're going to use MasterCard, Visa, American Express. How are you going to pay for this? Imagine that you were filling out an online reservation form to go to heaven, and you got down to the payment line. How are you going to pay for this? You got enough room on your credit card to pay for your trip to heaven? You got enough? Would you have to call your bank and ask them to extend your limit in order to have enough? We could add all of our credit cards together. And we wouldn't have enough room on all of our cards together to get one of us to heaven. How are we going to get there? We can't make the payment. The payment was made for us. You get down to that part of the reservation, and Jesus has already made the payment. His blood was shed on that cross. And when he shed his blood, he didn't shed his blood for him. He shed his blood for us so that we could be saved, so that every one of our sins could be taken out of the way. Can you imagine the love that Jesus had for us, that he would come and make that payment? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says that you were bought at a price. Jesus bought us. And I love the verse in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12 where the Bible says that Jesus, not with the blood of bulls or goats, he didn't take the blood of animals, but Hebrews 9 and verse 12 says, with his own blood. He entered the most holy place and obtained, you know what that verse says? He obtained eternal redemption. Jesus paid the price with his own blood for us to go to heaven. Thanks be to God for that indescribable gift. Because I want to go to heaven and you want to go to heaven and we can't afford to make it to heaven, but Jesus paid that price for us. And so you filled in all of your fields on this reservation form. And you get all the way down to the bottom. And oftentimes there's this big red button. And you know what it says? Submit. You know what you need to do to make a reservation to go to heaven? Not click a button. You need to submit. You need to give your life over to God. James 4, verse 7 says, Submit therefore not to yourself, not to the world. Submit therefore to God. Have you done that? Have, 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 you, have you laid it out? Have you, like Jesus said, not my will but yours be done? Have you submitted yourself to God? In Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9, the Bible says that Jesus, through the death that he died, verses 7 and 8 talk about his death, 
Talk about the agony that he went through and how he, how he became obedient to God himself. But Hebrews 5 and verse 9 says that he obtained, that, that he is, he's, he's given us eternal life. That through Jesus, we are able to obtain eternal salvation. But who is that for? Hebrews 5 and verse 9 says that he has given eternal, eternal salvation to all who obey him, who submit to him and obey him. Have you submitted to what God wants you to do? Have you obeyed what God wants you to do? In Acts chapter 2, there are some individuals gathered there who heard a sermon preached about what Jesus did for them on the cross. Who heard a sermon preached about the price that was paid for their eternal redemption. Who heard about what they had done to this Son of God, how they had nailed Him to the cross, but God had raised Him from the dead. And the Bible says in Acts 2 and verse 37, they were cut to the heart at the message of what Jesus had done for them and the price He had paid for them. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, you've got to submit You've got to obey. What do we do, Peter? Repent and let every one of you be baptized. Not because Peter says so, but because Jesus says so. In the name of Jesus Christ. Should we do this in order that we can declare our, our, our goodness to everybody? Should we do this to declare our salvation? Should we do it as an outward sign of an inward grace? Should we do it so that we can show the world? No, 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 none of those things. Peter says, you repent and you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Have you ever submitted? Have you ever obeyed? Have you ever been baptized for the remission of your sins? The Bible says that's a requirement in order to have a reservation to go to heaven. Have you ever done that? Sometimes, after I've made a reservation, particularly after some bad experiences with some hotels over the years, sometimes I'll get online just to check, to make sure my reservation really took. And then sometimes I'll go back a few days later and check just to make sure my reservation is still there. And then I'll rummage through my email to see, did I get a confirmation of this reservation being made? Once you have been baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins, you know what you need to do? You need to continue to confirm your reservation every day. You make that reservation. He, the blood of Jesus washes away every one of your sins when you're baptized. But the Bible says you need to be faithful unto Him in order to have that crown of life. The Apostle Paul got to the end of his life in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Will you be able to say this? Here's the Apostle Paul confirming that he had done what Jesus wanted him to do, confirming that he had a reservation. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7, I fought the good fight. Have you done that? Well, can you say that? I have finished the course. Are you on the course? Are you staying on the course? You won't be able to finish it if you're not on it and staying on it. I have kept the faith. Are you true to the teaching of Jesus? Are you true to the doctrine of Christ? Are you teaching what Jesus did? You, you can't say, I've kept the faith. if You're not still with it. Therefore, Paul says, there is laid up for me. Not there will be, there might be, there is. Laid up for me the crown of righteousness, with the, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give unto me on that day, but not to me only, but to all of those who love his appearing. Paul got to the end of his life and he said, I've been living my life confirming this reservation every day. How do you do that? By living faithfully. By fighting the fight, by keeping on course, by keeping the faith. 
Have you made your reservation? Is it there? Is your name in the book of life? Are you absolutely certain? As we close, I want you to think about these things. Your reservation in heaven is only there because it's guaranteed by the promise of God. He guarantees it. Titus 1 and verse 2, the Bible says that we have the hope of eternal life because of God who cannot lie has promised it to us. Your reservation in heaven is guaranteed by the promise of God. It is secured by the power of God. Will you look at 1 Peter chapter 1 one more time before we close? The Bible says that here's heaven, that it is an inheritance for those who have been born again, those who are children of God. It's an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled, and it fades not away. It's reserved in heaven for you. But look in verse 5. It's reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God. Your reservation is there, guaranteed by God. Guaranteed by His promise if you've made it. It's secure. It's, you, you ever get to a place and they say, well, we've lost your reservation. God's not going to lose your reservation. You might lose your reservation. You might cancel your reservation. You might decide, I don't want my reservation there anymore, but God's not going to lose it. It's secured as long as you keep it. It's secured by the power of God. Same power that made this world and this universe out of nothing is the same power that's locked your reservation in His hand. The only one who can unlock that reservation is you. Your reservation in heaven, the Bible says, is dependent upon your compliance to the will of God. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. And your reservation in heaven is waiting. It's waiting for you if you're a faithful child of God. If you've been born again, how is one born again? How is one begotten again in 1 Peter 1 and verse 3? Jesus said, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot enter the church. He cannot go to heaven. Unless one is baptized, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, the Word of God, he can't have his reservation in heaven. Is heaven waiting for you? It's only waiting for you if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you have done just as they did in Acts chapter 2, repented of your sins, turned away from your sin and said, I want to start doing what's right, turn my life in the direction of God, confess the faith that's in your heart, and only if you've been baptized, in order that every sin might be removed by the blood of Jesus, because at that very moment when you're baptized, Hebrews 12 and verse 23 says, as a part of God's church, He registers you in heaven. He writes your name in the book of life and calls upon us to be faithful to keep that reservation. If you don't have a reservation in heaven today, can we encourage you? Can we plead with you to make this the day that you make that reservation, even right now, as together we stand and sing.